Hey everybody, this is Jesse with Nexus 5 Soft Modern. Today I'm going to show you how to give your Nexus 4 the look and feel of an iPhone, iPhone running iOS. This process is going to work the same on a Nexus 4 or a Nexus 5, either Nexus device running 4.4 KitKat. This process will be exactly the same. We're going to use MIUI or MIUI or MIUI, I've heard it pronounced both those ways, to, uh, we're going to flash that ROM which is only going to work if you've rooted your device and you've already installed a custom recovery and check out the full tutorial for, for links on how to do that. The first thing you're going to have to do after you've already rooted and you've installed a custom recovery is you need to download Nexus for LTE modem flasher. You can do this on your Nexus 5 too because MIUI is ported from a Jelly Bean version of Android and a couple features don't work. For example, Wi-Fi and data aren't going to work if you try to flash this ROM without first doing this. So go ahead and download this app using the links provided, open it up, and you're going to install 0.54 stock modem. This is a modem that was from Android Jelly Bean. You're going you're gonna to tap this and then we'll flash. And once you do that, uh, you don't have to worry about downgrading your phone. All the features are going to be exactly the same. Everything will work just how you expect it, except it's going to work for MIUI now too. Another note is that if you go over to LTE modems, you can actually flash 0.4 plus 3.3 LTE hybrid modem. So if you want to enable LTE on your Nexus phone, on your Nexus 4, because it doesn't come with LTE enabled by default, that's a really great thing to do. If you want to do that, go to build prop, enable LTE, apply, and then you'll use this modem, 0.54 plus 3.3 LTE hybrid modem, and then you'll reboot and you'll have that. Or just stick with the stock, 0.54, that'll give you everything you need. Once you flash and reboot your phone, make sure that you make a backup in your recovery because downloading MIUI or flashing any ROM could be a risky thing. You want to make sure you have something that you can you can go back to in case anything goes wrong. Once you do that, download gaps in the MIUI zip file itself using the links I provided in the, in the tutorial, and then just turn your phone off and then reboot into recovery mode to flash those. I'm going to turn my phone off right now, reboot into recovery mode. Once you download the Google Apps package in the MIUI zip file and you reboot into recovery by holding down the volume down and power keys at the same time using the volume keys to select and then the power button to make that selection, you're going to do a factory reset on your phone. So you go to wipe and then slide this arrow to do a factory reset. It should only take a second. Once the factory reset is done, go back and install both the zip files for MIUI in the Google Apps package or GAPS. We'll go to install and then we'll go to MIUI Nexus 4, tap that and then go to add more zip files because we're going to flash both these files at the same time and we're going to flash MIUI Android GAPS. It's important that you use the MIUI version of Android GAPS or Google Apps because if you don't do that you won't be able to sign into the Play Store or use your Google account. Once you have both those selected, swipe to confirm and the flash process will begin. Once you flash both files, tap wipe cache in Dalvik. And once that process is complete, we're going to reboot our system. So the reboot is actually going to take a while the first time you do it. It could take up to five minutes. Once the reboot is finished, you'll get this MIUI welcome screen you can set up just the way you would set up any Android ROM or any Android skin like, like uh, TouchWiz or the HTC Sense. You'll just select your language. You'll go through, hit next, and you'll select your keyboard. You make a bunch of different selections. You can set up your Wi-Fi if you need to. Um, you can skip that step and just keep going in. You, you're going to have a couple of uh, third-party applications that are going to ask you permissions to do things like uh, the, like this uh, sync account so that you can set up, but you don't have to do any of that. You can just skip whatever you don't want to. You can always come back to it later if you want to. Um, this, this is actually pretty neat, the data usage monitor. You can set up a limit of how much data you want to use on your mobile plan, and if you hit that limit, it will give you a notification. Um, something that actually exists in stock Android, I believe. So you have um, you have a bunch of different features that you can check out. If you don't want to check any of it out, don't worry about it. You skip any of it. Once you actually start using MIUI, you're going to notice the, the iPhone influence right away. So the folders um, are very similar to what you would see on iPhone. You get these really nice transitions. The animations are very iPhone-like. Um, you'll notice that there's no app drawer at all. There's no more app drawers. So every time you download an app, it'll just appear on your home screen, and you have to organize it however you want to. Um, a lot of the apps are actually pretty nice. Um, the calculator is pretty much what you'd expect, but it's a very clean, nice interface. You'll see a lot of consistency across all the applications. Some of these are um, particularly useful, like the security app, which puts a lot of useful features into one place, data usage, power, um, block list permissions, which you can you can manage all of your app permissions right from here. 
Um, something else that I find to be pretty useful is the Explorer app, which is a, a file manager, which organizes everything. It organizes everything by a grid layout of icons. So you can find APKs here or docs or music. Anything you download will be organized in this way. That's pretty great. Uh, one thing that you might notice is that instead of having a nav bar at the bottom of your screen for back home and multitasking, you'll have this floating uh, kind of nav bar right here where the circle will by default be a back arrow which you can hit and if you kind of drag your finger you can get multitasking this way or menu or home. So that's a neat feature but if you don't like that you can actually change that by installing a different APK which I have as a zip file in the, um, in the download link. So you can just download that and then flash it by going into the recovery and then just selecting it and flashing it and it'll work right away. So uh, another thing about this is that by default, you won't have access to your Google account or any of that stuff. You have to do it manually. You actually have to go down and tap on Play Store, and then you'll have to add your Google account and sign in like you're doing it for the first time. And once you do that, you have to download all those apps individually. So you'd have to go in and download Gmail and download anything that you need. Otherwise, it won't be set up, and you won't be able to sign in to Google Play or do any of that stuff. So uh, this is just a very... Um, basic version of Android, but a really clean, nice looking one that I think that you'll enjoy. But there's still a lot of customization. For example, all these quick settings are completely customizable. You can go over here to more, and you can change anything you want to. All these toggles are really great and really easy to use. Make sure you explore MIUI and check it out because there's a lot here to like. And there's a lot here. It's a very, it's like a perfect marriage between Android and iOS. And that's it for the full tutorial. Check out Nexus 5 Soft Modder. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe. Thanks a lot.